Hello, hello guys, how are we doing and welcome back to the channel. Are you struggling to know how to hold hills and get decent setups with your squad or even as a solo player or a duo player or a trio player? I don't want to leave anyone out. Um, on the two new maps that have been added to MW3 Ranked Play, I've done spawn guys, but I decided to add these two to the new series that I sort of started this year where I go through the best setups you can have on each hill to attain spawns and map control. So we're going to be going on through Vista today. Obviously, six star video will come as it was the other map that was added in season three. Um, just a caveat, obviously, this is if you can get the perfect setup. Obviously, if you get full down, get into these setups and it would be good. Or if you can rotate early, get into these setups, you'll be laughing. Um, obviously, if you're a solo duo queuer, duo queuer, trio queuer, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But hopefully, if you know where your team are by looking at the minimap, you can sort of fill the gap that it's missing in the setups I'm providing. Um, so kicking it off with P1 on Vista here, which is in this little cafe bit. Um, and we're going from the perspective of the red team here who are spawned on this left hand side um so let's start at the top you have this player up here who's on the bridge essentially watching the the cut from the deep left and then the bridge uh, the cut to the front of the hill pretty much and um, next you have player number two just here who is pretty much holding the hole for uh, down the middle of the map um realistically they shouldn't be able to get to the hill with number uh number three and number two watching but number one is also on the hill sort of watching front and watching the side where they can like if they can help where can they help um but realistically their job is just to sit and soak time and then finally you have player number four who is sat in this top room next to p2 and just looking at the flank through here now in this setup uh they'll spawn their enemy team are going to be spawning is this light blue area which is why i sort of covered them up a little bit because they're spawning a little bit far which means they might want to flank so that's why number four is sort of here so they can cover the right hand side of the map fully uh, and as you can see there's literally no gaps now you're probably thinking what if they spawn behind you well, there's a thing that's up they can't number one is blocking the spawn uh p3 i believe it is uh up here near the bar and player number two is blocking the spawn on the fountain so it's very essential that these two players i mean anywhere in p1 will block this but it's essential player number two doesn't really push up because otherwise it will leave the spawn open so if this player two dies, number four can fill the gap and, and help out. Uh, but this is the best setup from this side if you can obtain it. Now, if we take it from the other side here, and the, from the perspective of the blue team, um, the spawn that you're going to have as blue team uh, uh, is this, this spawn here. But there's two spawns, obviously, you've got to be aware of. If you've seen my spawn guys, you will know. Um, so we're going to go through the setup from the blue side. So you have player number seven who's on the bridge, basically watching over the whole of the right-hand side of the map. You have player in the hill, player number six, who's literally just watching the entrance to the hill. That's all they're pretty much doing. Ideally, with the submachine gun. Uh, obviously, number seven will have an AR, although the rival is a beamer, so you, who knows? Um, and then you have the player sat on the sort of heady middle of the P1 room. Uh, and from here, what they can do, they can sit on this Darcy heady, watching this, this run up the stairs and just beam anyone running up there. And then finally, you have player at the very bottom here who's watching the whole left-hand side towards P2. Um, you're probably wondering why they're so far out of play. But in this position, the, the spawn that the red team will be spawning are on the fountain. So they, they, there is potential tendency for the red team to go all the way around and then pinch or all the way around this way and pinch. But whereas number uh, the player number eight at the bottom here can pick that up. Additionally, you're probably thinking, what if they flip? They won't because you have number seven block in this one. And this is why number eight is so far back at the bottom of the hill here, at the bottom of the map here. They're blocking this spawn by being this close to it. So... If these two stay where they are, they will never flip, basically. If this player down here pushes a little bit more forward, it does open the spawn up. So just be very careful that if your team die first, like out of the whole of, of the whole map, fine. They'll spawn here. Your teammate will just spawn in the, the available spawn behind you. However, if you kill an enemy before, you know, if, if you kill an enemy in the in the set of kills um, first and they respawn in first and you leave this open, they can flip. So just make sure that player number eight is, you know, in this general vicinity, watching the left flank. Um, but also trying to flip yeah make sure we don't flip too much um and then moving on to p2 so p2 is this little square down here and we're going to take the position of the red team um because personally i think these are the better spawns to have so you sort of want to fight for these spawns towards the end of p1 and then you know fight from left to right as we're seeing it here so first of all you've got player number one who is on the hill now the the colors I'm, i've got here i've put red as the primary place they should be watching and then the orange arrows are where they can watch if something goes wrong or if something breaks in the setup or someone needs additional help um so we'll actually start at the top here with player number three they're watching p1 that's literally their job to make sure 
because in this position where the red team are, the enemy team will be spawning in this blue zone, which, you know, some people do like to flank through P1, especially if the new hill's up here, which is where it is. Um, so this player here in number three is sat just watching this, but they are also available to help middle and check this mid. They can get on this heady and watch middle if they need help towards the mid-hand side of the map. So this player can a little bit, needs to be a little bit flexible. We then have player number two here sat on watching this mid corridor. A lot of people playing off this spawn like to run down middle like this to get height over hill. Um, so number two is essential in, in this setup working because they need to make sure that no one can get through. And then obviously there's a little bit, if they need help on the hill, this player can reach out and you know, help out on the hill. Uh, but in order to do that, they need to make sure number three here is covering the middle so they don't get pinched. And you then have player number four who needs to stay alive. Player number four is blocking the flip spawn here, which you really want to keep as much as you can. Um, and they're watching basically front where they want. Um, and then finally you have player number one who is probably a submachine gun player. Number number four, number three can also be a submachine gun player. If they want to play a little bit tighter, they can be behind the bar just here. Um, but realistically, the two submachine gun players here are probably number three and number one. Um, number one shouldn't really take a gunfight. If this strat works and people are winning their ones, they're winning their gunfights, which I know can't be guaranteed, um, you sort of want to try and you know win your ones. But yeah, number one is the last resort player. If they need to chow, they can chow, and their place to look is this way. They do. They should not watch top. The players of this half side, this half top side of the map, should be watching the top. Uh, and player number four, or player number one on the hill, should literally just be very focused on the front of the hill. The immediate, the immediate danger. We then move on to P3. Now, obviously, if you you sort of do want to keep these spawns, so as I say, this is the perfect scenario. So if you can rotate earlier, which you should be doing anyway, this is what setup you do want to try and obtain. We've got the exact same color scheme here. The only difference is you'll see. Player number four is in a different, slightly different color. This is part of the red team, but they're low. They're on the ground floor. They're not up where the hill is. So I just wanted to differentiate with a, just a different color. So player number four in the white arrow, their bottom floor uh, down this little area here. So what have we got here? We have player number one watching middle, um, just like so. And they're watching pretty much the mid lane, stopping any enemies coming off spawn and just challenging through middle. You then have player number two who is watching the push through P1 and it can be a little bit flexible in watching the, the pinch through mid as well. Um, but obviously it depends how much help number one needs. Number one, as I, I do want to say, is almost essential of staying alive because they're sort of the one looking after the spawn, you could say. That's, if that's how you could word it or see it. Um, so yeah, number one and number two should be owning the mid side of the map. And then finally you have, well, not finally, uh, next you have player number four at the bottom of... Uh, of, of the of the building down here and they're literally just watching the left hand side they can they don't necessarily have to be in this exact position but their job is to be an ar player or a sub player but they're not meant to allow anyone to get at the bottom of this area here that's literally their purpose as long as they're doing that i don't really care where they sit but that should be generally where they are um they can't get to the balcony so you don't really have to worry about that because player number two is in p1 um but then that leaves player number three who's literally sat on time doing nothing which is the ideal situation especially in a map which is literally just three lanes you only really need to set up a three people for the person on the fourth and the fourth person to you know just chill out a bit um you will see some orange lines here so in these circumstances if player four needs to if number one gets killed and they just literally just run through mid player number four can be like okay they're clearly pushing the right hand side i'm going to leave this left and then pick it up pick up the pinch just like so um, number three can also assist with number two. They can push to this front side of the hill here, still be on time, lay down and watch front. Um, it's just from a little bit of a weird off angle here, but that's really extreme circumstances. Realistically, they should be able to just bosh it in the initial setup you do have here. We then take a look at P4, which is down here. Now, P4 I am going to do from both perspectives because sometimes it can be really quite mixy. Um, so we're starting off with the red team. Let's, let's just suggest they've held the two of the last three hole the last three hills uh, number three here is all the way back here blocking spawns that's literally their main objective here is to block the spawns as you can see the red spawn is in this yellow zone here and this player number three being here is watching that uh, or making sure the blue team can't spawn there but whilst doing that they can sit where they are which of where i've put here and watch the mid cut so anyone running out of p1 through this entrance here so if this player decides to run this way they're going to get cut off by this player here. They might be able to get a light ping on them. They're probably not going to kill them because if they literally run just like this, they're not going to get much of an opportunity to kill them. Um, but yeah, they'll at least maybe get a live mark or some damage out or at least be able to communicate that to the rest of the team. Um, next, you have player number one at the bottom here who is um, 
in the top window again or they can sort of play around you know p2 or top window but this is a nice spot and the reason they want to be here is to block this spawn for the enemy to spawn the two spawns the blue team will spawn are here or here this blood dark blue one opens up if someone is around p2 so this player here is blocking this close spawn spawning them that little bit further out and pushes their focus through middle rather than just you know straight to the front so Number one's got a lot of responsibility here. They're probably going to die, but as long as you get one or two kills before dying, fine. Uh, and then you spawn in. Number two will then just fill the gap like so. And there is, you know, you treat it as like a conveyor belt system. The, f the further person, the person furthest up dies, you fill the gap. The next person who just spawns in fills the gap at the very end of that trail. Um, but yeah, you, you then have player number four, who again is watching mid. Anyone who manages to get through here will be picked up by player number four. Anyone who decides to run through mid from the dark blue spawn will be killed by number four and then finally you have player on number two just sat on the hill um being the last resort now obviously if this is a setup where they know there are no gaps um absolutely no, no gaps here um unless they somehow get all the way around the map i don't know how that would happen but player number two is a last resort and again they need to be bumping people off um if they die so as i say that's sort of the conveyor belt system but realistically the best place they can watch just in case anyone decides to you know get through sneak right under the window here uh, is just this low area just here now let's take it from the other side let's say your blue team want to control this side and you want to control it from this perspective from this side of the hill now this is a really strong way to hold the hill from because it's so easy to spawn trap it's really really easy you'll see here um the spawns that the red will be getting are p3 um, but the only way that works, the only way they don't flip out is if player number seven here or someone is lingering around this building here. That will stop them spawning here. And you'll notice that the spawn isn't here, but there's a spawn point here. But you need someone lingering around this building here, holding P2, holding this you know top balcony, ensuring that the red team can't flip out. That's the only way this works. Um, but whilst doing that, you can sort of watch middle. So if any of these decide to run through P1, uh, and you know try and flank or something like that number seven will have that so you're not being completely useless there uh, and obviously you're going to have an ar that's the the best gun in that position is an ar uh you then have player number eight here who is can be a sub can be an ar doesn't really matter probably a sub with this close range engagement um but they're literally watching the cut anyone who wants to get through like this uh, will literally just be picked off by this player uh, and then they can have a little bit of flexibility and look over the fountain if these players need help with the front side of the hill um Next, you have player number five who's laying down. Now, this is really important. Laying down on the left of the fountain, literally watching this alley here. Because um, what that means is that the players from Pillars can't kill them and they're literally just taking the gunfights. They're singling out this area here. And then finally, you have player on the hill who's watching the Pillars. So if they try to, you know, run down here and attack this player, at least this player here on the hill will be able to see them come out. Um, and then obviously if this player communicates that there's people pushing pillars i need help he can stand up and you know chow which is why that's an alternative los but then again as i said if both this player and this player are struggling player number eight can uh can step up look over look across here and hold this complete cut of the hill player number eight can be in the hill and hidden there's a little doorway right where this player is uh, where you can sort of be really tucked in um, and not get shot from so that's a really nice play if you want to try and stay alive but personally this is the best setup. Uh, obviously, as I say, if you're solo queuing and you want these spawns to maintain, the best thing you can probably do solo queuing is to obtain the role of blocking the spawn. You're probably not going to get too many kills. You're probably not going to be able to stat pad from this position. However, you're going to be doing a lot for your team. You're going to be making the spawns really predictable. And if you're communicating that on the mic, it's going to do the team a world of good. We then finally move over to P5. Have we done P3? We did P3. P5, apologies. Um, so P5 is obviously this bridge area here. Now, just double check we haven't missed one. Apologies. Oh, we're good, we're good. So P5 is the bridge area here, both top and under bridge, sort of, I think you can get the hill from. Um, again, I'm doing this from both sides because you can't always guarantee what side you've got. The others you sort of can because the spawns are really sticky, but this one's a little bit mixy. Um, so let's say you're, you're taking the perspective of the red team here. The main spawn you want to be trying to block is this yellow spawn which is why player number four is really important here because if this player number four pushes up too much it's going to open this yellow spawn up and if then it leaves it basically open for the blue team to flip which you don't want to do in these setups the biggest thing you want to try and do is be 
allow the play to be really predictable in your favor and you need to block the right spawns to be doing that so that's why player number four here has got this yellow, yellow, little yellow ring around them uh, and it's because they're blocking the yellow this, this yellow spawn point here which is where red can spawn um so this player whilst doing that can just watch the mid cut additional to number one obviously in this position um with player players three and two pushed where they are it will block the the closer spawn which is sort of in this vicinity here but what they're then being pushed up or, or generally on the hill will do is spawn the blue team all the way back here so they do have a little bit of an inclination to run down middle because it's a little bit closer um which is why you've got two people sort of watching that um but as i say you've got this orange line here so player number one decides they need to help the front out a little bit more if these two team this these two teammates okay they're all four here i need help front player number four needs to stay here because they're blocking the spawn um, but player number one can be a little bit more flexible help out here uh, and just chow the front with these players you then have player number three who's laying on the bridge behind the sort of the ledge of the cover and literally just watching the cut like this so if anyone decides to push real close they're probably going to have a submachine gun hopefully player number three should have a machine gun here and they can literally just beam people uh, just run into the front of the hill from this area here and then finally you have player number two here who is on the box at the bottom of the hill uh, and then from this position they can literally just watch anyone decided to if this player decides to run round like this or run through here this player here will have that cut um but as i say this is very important this only work if this player here is blocking this back spawn there is a spawn point back here um but if you're on the hill that will block that so it's not too much of a not too much of a problem but then look and look at the final setup here which is obviously still p5 but from the other position personally this is my favorite side to hold p5 from um, because it can be so dominant so 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 dominant um so we'll start at the we'll start at the top actually first of all you have player on the hill on the side of the bridge on the heady literally just looking over this right hand side of the map here anyone coming over the balcony or the catwalk will be shot anyone you know challenging from the bar can be killed um worst case scenario if you feel like this player's if you're gonna die and you're this player just lay down just don't die that you're on the hill and whilst you're alive here you're blocking this back blue spawn all the way back here so it's really essential you stay alive here because of two main reasons you're on the hill and you're blocking the good spawn behind you obviously they'll have an ar hopefully um you then have player number seven here who's doing something really quite important something that's probably quite underrated um they're obviously holding p1 so they're holding this middle lane so if these players decide to run through mid um they're gonna you know get picked off by player number seven but player number seven is also blocking this yellow spawn so this player is blocking this spawn number seven is blocking this spawn and as a result the red team have this black this horrible 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 spawn all the way at the bottom here so you, you with player number seven or generally anyone in this area of p1 or on p1 you could say um it, and as long as someone is blocking this hill this back spawn which you sort of can do from the hill the enemy team will spawn at the bottom of the staircase just in this yellow zone here so yeah number seven again is holding a nice angle but they're doing something even more important and that's spawning the enemy even further away now with these spawns obviously the team the the, the enemies uh, have got a couple of routes they can take they can run through mid run down up here or even go right so it's important to have all these areas covered why you which is why you don't have everyone just facing this one staircase because people can just take routes especially at like the higher levels um so you do have players in no, in number five here who's can have a sub or an ar doesn't really matter from this angle but probably an ar because it's a little bit easier to control the recall over the headies um but yeah watch this mid cut anyone just simply running up the stairs towards this player is going to just get beamed because that's a horrible heady to chal against they've you've got height you've got a disgusting heady it almost looks like a uh it's a head well it is a head glitch from this perspective uh, and then finally you do have a lonesome player all the way at the bottom here um, and you're probably wondering what on earth are they watching well that's they're literally watching anyone who decides to take a rogue flank because of these spawns you're going to get a lot of people run up these stairs and need to go left or right if they're struggling to run up left because this player is literally beaming everyone they're going to run right so this player here is far back enough um to not block this spawn which is important they need to sort of be this far back but they're also far back enough to cover this whole left side side if they were here literally just watching up like this a player could run behind them and then get through whereas it because they're all the way back here you know watching this complete long line of sight anyone who jumps out the window and go mid they've got anyone who decides to flank around here they can shoot and um, this is a really nice position and allows for a decent control of mid when p1 does and eventually pop so that's going to do it i hope you enjoyed the video if there's any constructive criticism you can have for my six star guide which we'll be covering in a few days but obviously i won't make it for a few days so if you do have any constructive criticism about my final unless they had more hardpoint maps um sort of hardpoint guide 
give me a shout down in the comments. Uh, and if you found this useful, also let me know. Sub if you're new to the channel, of course. And if you want to see more content like this, pop the bell so that you pop the bell. Ignore that. Put on notifications so that you can uh, guarantee you won't miss a video from, from myself. Um, so yeah, that'll do it for me. Ciao for now.